The Lagarde Twin story is almost a rags to riches tale. From the bushlands of Australia to the hallowed halls of Hollywood, identical twins Tom and Ted, after seeing a hop along Cassidy movie at the age of seven, wanted nothing but to be singing cowboys. Now, in their mid 80s, Ted and Tom have captured life's treasured moments. They're extraordinary adventures in an autobiography. It's called Showbiz Hustlers. It's a true story. And the guys are on live with us right now. Ted and Tom, welcome into Melbourne. Oh, Melbourne brings back so many memories. We played the Melbourne show uh, so many years, um, along with with Frank Ifield and Big Chief Little Wolf. Uh, Imagine uh, way before your time, Lee. Right? No, I, I rem- I'm 70 years old, and uh, I remember them well. Don't you worry. I used to love the Melbourne show in those days. Oh, gee, they, that's uh, fantastic. We love, we love the, the city of Melbourne, the people of Melbourne. We can never... Here's our uh, theme song, Lee. Brothers running down a dream Together searching for the rainbow's end Brothers, we will always be a team and we'll always stay the very best of friends. And of course, boys, you've been that all the years, haven't you? You've been the best of friends, being identical twins, and and your, your life's a, a story, isn't it? Uh, did, uh, did, did Lionel send you our book? I've got your book right in front of me. Oh, wonderful, Lee. You know that song, Poison Darts, is quite, is quite a story because we were touring, uh, travelling Australia with Buddy Williams, our fa- favourite hillbilly singer. In 1951. In 1951, mm-hmm. we were sitting around the campfire. He had a Wild West show, and we would ride buck jumpers and, and bulls, and, and Buddy let us sing a song, and he was such a prolific writer. So we are sitting around the campfire after the show one night, and Buddy said, Ted and Tom, I have a feeling you're going to make it, and I want to, I'd like to write it because you said, you're going to find out that you're going to have some ups and downs, tough times, good times. And he wrote that song in, in about 15 minutes. Mm. So when we hit Hollywood in 1957, February 1957, uh, we went into, uh, met this gentleman. He was a, a, one of the top lead guitarists in Hollywood, Tiny Timbrell. He loved the song. And they took us into the into the studio at Capitol Records, and we recorded that in February 1957. There you are. What history is not that, eh? They're fantastic. Here's my brother Tom, Lee. Mm-hmm. Tom. Lee, and you, yeah, and it was recorded on, back in those days. It was yeah. analog, you know. Yes, of course. So we said to the uh, uh, producer, uh, Tiny Timbrell, he, and he's one of the most uh, popular um, guitarists in Hollywood in those days, we said, can we hear it? Play the play. He played it back for us. Well, we hadn't heard that song again in almost 60 years. Well, we get a an email from, I don't know whether you know Gary Cox, had the, the writer in, uh, in in Tamworth. But anyway, he sent us an email and said, whatever happened to uh, Poison Darts? Well, we kept every 45 that we made, and that was the very first one. On dot records. Go on. So yeah. We were able to get an MP3, send it to him, and he was a big Buddy Williams fan too. And he said, when I heard it, he said it brought tears to my eyes. Yeah, it, it brought tears to our eyes too. Mm, it's a it lovely track. A tree- yeah. So, were you born in Melbourne? Yes, uh, Tom. I was born in uh, in Brighton, down in Melbourne, and uh, oh, I'm really? a, I'm a, I'm almost a hundred years old there. You know, just just, just like you guys. <laughs> You know, <laughs> let, let, let me take you back, Tom. I, I was reading in the book, reading in your book, mm-hmm. about how you guys had to create entertainment. And this is a great story about the Denmans and, and their farm. Tell the listeners your story. It's a great one. Well, I tell you, we were the youngest. There were nine children. Ted and I were the youngest. Mm. And uh, uh, we, we were born in McKay. At two days old, they put us on a sulky, took us out 50 miles from the bush to our dad's sugarcane farm. And, and at seven, it, it was all about, back, back in those days, uh, it, it was all about work and survival. That's right. And, and living, I was living in a two-room, two-check. When there was no electricity, no telephone, not even running water. How we all survived, but we did. And when we were seven, George came home with a, with a gramophone, and he had a couple of uh, um, 78 records. 
he put on a record by Jimmy Rogers and another one by Buddy Williams. Well, we were hooked on country music right then. Yep. Then a month, a month later, Mum took us into our hometown, and we hadn't seen our hometown since the day we were born. Now we're seven. And she took us into a movie. It was a Hopalong Cassidy movie. When we got driving back, we said, Mum, we're going to be singing cowboys, singing stopping. Mm. We're going to be in show business. And she said, Ted and Tom, I have a feeling that you're both born to entertain us. She is right. Yeah, my word, my word. Tom, I want to take you back, though, a little bit before that, because in your book, in Chapter 3, uh, there's a chapter that says laughter and sorrow, and you're talking there about uh, creating your own entertainment and going next door to the farm and next door, the Denmans, and doing rather naughty things there. You, you're sampling the, the beer and sampling the sarsaparilla, and then you're smashing windows. Tell us about it. Oh, well, you had to make your own, your own fun back then, you know? Yeah. And Brother Dave was... Two years and ten months older than Tom and I. Sister May was eleven months older. And every Saturday morning we'd go down to this creek. Uh, there was we had a little creek next to the house, but then about uh, oh, a third of a mile was a, a, quite a big creek called the Denmans. That's where the, mm-hmm. the Denmans lived. Had their uh, their farm on the other side of the creek. They had a mixed farm, cattle and sugar cane, and so. We'd go down and take some eggs and boil the bully and, and have, have my own little picnic. And then one day we decided to uh, uh, cross the river. And uh, they had an old haunted house there on the farm. They only come out once a week. So uh, it's a beautiful day. And so uh, we go inside and they we find these boxes of uh, all kinds of sarsaparilla and beer. <laughs> So we, 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 we said to uh, May and David, uh, you guys stay in. We're going to go out and we're going to we're going to play cowboys and Indians. Yeah, you know? yeah. So we got a whole bunch of stones and uh, so, and then there was some uh, some calves hanging around the yard. So we wanted to show them that we were going to be uh, stockmen and cowboys and we going to show them how to ride. So we we, we uh, got some of the calves in the, in the yard and. Tom hopped on one, I hopped on one, and we had our own like little rodeo. Well, then we said we better get home. So Monday morning came around, and John Denman, the uh, owner of the farm, apparently saw all the windows broken, and all the beer and the soft drink, yeah. and, and we knew. And when Dad said he knew, he said, "You little," now Dad was a disciplinarian, you yeah. know. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he whipped it good big time. Well, he, 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 boys, in the book, you talk about getting whipped for your father. So. Yes. Oh, with a, with a razor strap. I mean, yeah. they just take our pens down. If oh. it hadn't been for Dad, we would have been two Ned Kellys. Oh. <laughs> we, were wild, we were wild buggers. Uh, really? I mean, we were... Oh. We thank uh, our dad every day for being a disciplinarian. There you, know? you are. Uh, you brought back some memories for me too because in the book you talk about uh, dry bread and dripping. Now, I can recall as a kid we had dripping on toast, not the dry bread, but the toast. Yeah. Uh, some great memories in this book. How we had to survive in those days was very different to today, isn't it? Oh, surviving bread and dripping. Oh, <laughs> Are you familiar with bread and dripping? Yes, I am very familiar with it, yes. <laughs> Yep. But, but now Marmite. You had, you had Marmite, you say, in the book. Why was it Marmite and not Vegemite for you? Well, it, it, well it's pretty, the Vegemite is copied from Marmite. But in the uh, winter, I mean, we, 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 we eat Vegemite every day over here. Yeah, good, and, good. But bread and dripping. Yeah. And that was our, our, uh, our tucker that we took to school. Yeah, there you are. There you are. And, and the, but the kids that had a little money, they, they, we'd say, oh, you got to taste this, this uh, sandwich. Oh, bread and dripping, it tastes so good. And they'd have, like, uh, tomatoes and whatever. They, and we'd make a switcheroo with them, you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, I do, <laughs> yes. Listen, uh, boys, as we uh, journey into the book, I'm on the, uh, Chapter 8, and the reading through Chapter 8, one of your big breaks came uh, via the ABC network. And through that, you got a, a job with Ashton Circus. Tell us how that came about. Well, you know what? When we arrived in Sydney, Australia, we call it God's Divine Adventure or Miracle, and it was a miracle. And uh, we, we met Edmund Samuels. He was the most famous chemist in Australia. He had the headache, uh, Edmund Samuels Headache Bar opposite Hotel Australia on 
Castle Ray Street. Right. And we met him just for a miracle. And um, so we, he, his, his friend set up an appointment. He sang him a few songs. He said, Ted and Tom, uh, why do you want to be in show business? We said, well, we want to make our mother proud. Because when we left home um, at uh, 15, standing on the steps of the old farmhouse, and just the clothes on our back, guitar, and that was it, and a swag. We said, Mama, we're going to come back one day, and we're, we're going to take you uh, on, a, on a trip, which all happened. But Edmund Samuels took a liking to us, and he got to know Clem Simler, who was the uh, president no, or the man, manager. general manager of the Australian Broadcasting Commission. Mm-hmm. And and he had a way with him that um, he just knew, and he, he, he um, was able to get us a 15-minute radio show called um, Radio Roundup. And and uh, we had a, a writer write a theme song for us, but Eddie would, we would spend hours with him, and we'd play a song, like if we were doing... Uh, Whatever song we were doing, he, he'd do an introduction to it. And we made front page on the uh, ABC Weekly. And that led to so many things. And that's how we got... Uh, Ashton Circus. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, you had and, that desire to become famous, of course, and, and that was your ambition, and your dream was to go to Hollywood, which you did do. And I see that in 1957, you're on the Orsova sailing out of uh, of Sydney. Now, it's a story about that because my grandmother left Melbourne in 1957 on the Orsova as well. Now, you went from Sydney. Now, whether it was a different voyage, I'm not sure, but she sailed out of Melbourne, Station P, on the Orsova. So what a coincidence that is. Yeah, but, well, you know what? We, we it, it, Well, I had a dream and a vision. Ali, in, in 1956, we had a caravan. It was our home for quite a few years. And I, I, after meeting Hopalong Cassidy, who was one of our first heroes, and uh, I, I woke Ted up. I said, Ted, Ted, you wake up. He said, what's going on? I said, I had a dream and a vision. I said, we're going to... Uh, we were traveling on Sideshow Alley. Yeah. And uh, I said, well, we're going to go to Hollywood. We're going to be on TV. We're going to meet our other stars. She's not the Roy Rogers. And it all came to fruition. Yes. And yes. how things evolved. It's, it's, uh, but a- anyway, Lee, you know, life is, a, as you probably know, is a succession of lessons which has to be lived to be understood. And it's not until you get out into the battlefields of life and have real experiences that you really learn to know what the real truth is all about. You know what I mean? Well, you mixed in, in some great circles, and you still do. Of course, Dale Evans, Roy Rogers, uh, you mentioned Ethel uh, Merman, I think it was. Uh, that was part of a Christian group you joined up, the Hollywood Christian group. Ah, oh, you know what? We, there's a chapter in there, so the King of the Cowboys, that yes. is the King of Kings. And, and it, Mum used to talk about the Bible and everything, but Ted and I were wild boys. But when we accepted Christ as our personal saviour in Hollywood, and if you would have, somebody would have said, tonight you're going to go down, and there was Roy Rogers and Dale Evans and um, Dale Roberts and all, about a dozen big stars there, we would have said, hey, you kidding? But we did. You can't explain it to anybody. And we believe that's one of the reasons why God has let us live this long. And, and, and we strayed a lot of time. We strayed a lot of time and made mistakes and everything. But nobody's perfect. And it's like the Bible says, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I think it's one of the reasons. And, and the reason we, 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 we hand wrote longhand at the book, we spent three years. Goodness. And cut yeah. it off with 500 pages. Yeah. But we wanted it to get into the hands of our fellow strugglers and our dreamers. Well, it's an, it's so an inspiration. It really is. Well, do you know what? Did, uh, did Lionel send you the. Uh, the song Deep in the Heart of the Outback. Yes, I've got that too. Yep. Well, the two writers in Nashville. The the uh, I'll put Ted on. He can tell you that story. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, Luke and Jesse, two young writers in Nashville, uh, got a book and read it, and they uh, uh, called us one one uh, one afternoon. Came out of the house here in Andersonville and uh, sang it for us, and uh, brought tears to our eyes. And so we said, make it make a dub of the song. Yeah. And Tom kn- knows this top producer, Jeff Huskins. And uh, Jeff came out of the house one, night, one afternoon, played the dub for him. He fell in love with the song and fell in love with Luke and Jesse's voice, took him into the studio, and and uh, that's the result of it, uh, Lee. Yeah, hang on there, mate. I've got a cut of that track here for you. They 
were born in a shack on the edge of the earth And they fought tooth and nail and for all it was worth Their mom taught them about God and that's what kept them on track Deep in the heart of the Alabama now that's a track you're talking about, and it's a beautiful, beautiful song. And of course, your history wrapped up in that. Hey, Lee, I mean, when we heard that, with more tears to eyes. Yeah. But you know, we went back to Australia. I don't know whether you knew this or not. In in uh, 2013, because in 1964, Ted and I went back to Australia after be having a TV show in, in Toronto, Canada, and we uh, came up with a. Uh, with an idea for a show called Country Star. Yes, yes, and, I read about and, that. Yeah, and so anyway, it was never released until uh, 2011 when Tim Daly at CMC Foxtel released it. And apparently they got quite a positive response from that. Well, they flew us down there in 2013 with Rascal Flats and Bigger Rich and, and uh, Chris Young and Ben Berry and all the young guys and Australian performers, and I'll never forget, we opened the first day with uh, Chris Young. Yeah. And when they met Ted and I, they said, how old are you guys? <laughs> and we said, well, I think we're old enough to know better yes. and young enough to do something about it. Yeah. Said, to be honest, I said, we're 82. They said, what? <laughs> yeah, sensational. sensational. And you're still going. You're still performing today? Oh, yes. I mean... <laughs> Show us a light, we'll put on a 45 minute show for you. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> well, there's a lot of history in what you, you guys are, are talking about. Your mum joined you in 1958. Uh, I was reading there that she came and she took charge of the kitchen and looked after you guys, and you must have loved your mum. Oh, look, you know what, uh, Atlee, when we, when we left home, uh, when, when, when it, it was Fred Purdy who came to the farm and uh, he uh, hopped off his horse, introduced himself to our older brother, Herb. He said, I'm Fred Purdy from Rocky Ponds Cattle Station. I'm looking for some stockmen. Do you know of anybody? And Herb said, no, I don't know anybody. Where, where is Rocky Ponds? Uh, Fred gave him where it was and said, uh, well, he said, how did they get there? Well, he said, a rattle comes and drops the provisions off at Bobba Wobba. When, and we were listening. Oh, Bobba Wobba. And, and so when we got home, we said to Mum, we're leaving in the morning, Mum. We're leaving home. And she, she gave us her blessings. We loved our mother. I mean, and we we he was we sing a song for the Mama. You're an angel. Please tell Daddy we love him so. Yeah, we sing that. Beautiful. That's in our show. That's lovely. And so when they brought us down there in uh, 2013, uh, it was such a we hadn't been back to Australia in over 20 years. I hadn't been back to a hometown and. 25 years. You'd see a lot of and change. So, yes, but can't wait to, to meet you, Lee. Well, I'd love to meet you guys too. And uh, what part of the states are you living in these days? Oh, I beg your pardon, Lee. What part of the states do you live in? Oh, we're in Henderson, just right outside of Nashville. Right, okay. And, yeah, Hendersonville was where Johnny Cash, Johnny Cash yep. and Conway Twitty. And, well, you've got pictures oh, in your book of uh, Johnny Cash and you guys too. So you've, yeah. met, you've met and dealt with so many people over the years. The book is called Showbiz Hustlers. It's uh, one of the greatest untold stories, and it's a true life story, these two guys, the guard, the, the, uh, the guard twins, Ted and Tom. And that's who we've been talking to. Guys, thank you very, very much for your valuable time thank today. You. I'd love to meet you, you in person. Thank you. God love you. And, le- and keep up the good work that you're doing. And, and uh, email Lionel and uh, let him know how the program went with you, Lee. Yeah, he'll get a copy of this this afternoon. Oh, thank you, Lee. God bless you. And you thank too, guys. You. Yeah, take care, please, and thank you for your time once again. Thank you, Lee. Okay, bye. bye-bye to you. That's the book, friends. You can go and buy it at your local stores. If you can't get hold of it, you can contact me uh, on uh, at the station phone number, and I'll uh, tell you where to go and buy it. Showbiz Hustlers, the Lagarde twins, Ted and Tom. It's a true life story, and the book is fascinating, going from the very, very early days all the way through to what these guys have experienced. Two lovely gentlemen. Nineteen sixty-two.